Good evening, everyone. At 6 p.m. on January 22nd, 2024, I'd like to call the City Council meeting to order. We'd like to begin by inviting Pastor Deborah Timmons from Asbury Church, Church forward to give the invitation. Dear wise and loving Father, we thank you for this evening, a day that you have made. We ask you to bless us and protect us, oh God. Thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Bless the leaders of this great city of Madison. Bless this meeting, the agenda. Bless us individually and collectively, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Mayor Finley? Here. Council Member Robleski? Here. Council Member Spears? Here. Council Member Powell? Here. Council Member Shaw? Here. Council Member Bartlett? Here. Council Member Denzine? Here. Council Member C. Here. Do we have any amendments to the agenda? We do not. Great. Let's move to approval of minutes number 2024-01-RG. Move to approve. Okay. Any motion? Second, any discussion? Ready for a vote? I'm sorry, I didn't get the second. Uh, Teddy. Powell. Yes. Okay. No. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member mm -hmm. Spears? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Thanks. Council Member Denzine. Aye. And the motion passes. We have two presentations this evening, and we're going to begin with. Hi, <laughs> uh, Michelle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ask her to come forward as this is going to a proclamation for National Mentory Month. And I'll read just a couple of things. Everyone remembers someone special, a neighbor, teacher, relative, friend who ignited or defended um, or our potential. And every adult has something to offer. An hour a week can make a big difference in a child's life. A mentor does not have to change his or her life to change a child's. Research, research has shown that children engaged in a one-on-one -on -one professionally supported mentoring programs like Big Brothers Big Sisters are more likely to finish high school and less likely to begin using drugs and alcohol, skip school, or be involved in violence. So therefore, Paul Finley, Mayor of the City of Madison, hereby declare January of 2024 as National Mentoring Month in the City of Madison, and I'm happy to give you this. Sure. And then when you want to say a couple words, we'd love you to be able to do that. I'm not sure what to say. We're a little scattered today after being gone for a week. <laughs> um, thank you for the city for supporting our, and our kids and our program, and I do know what to say. Especially to the gentlemen in the room, we have like 25 little boys on our wait list just in Madison County that need mentors. All right. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Elizabeth. Well, Matt. And this is for Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And I'll read this as some statistics. Due to the secretive and illegal nature, it is difficult to accurately quantify the extent of human trafficking. However, the U.S. Department of State estimates that anywhere from 600,000 to 800,000 people are trafficked across international borders each year. Most victims of human trafficking are women or children who have been marginalized and isolated from society. The difficulty in grasping the full scope of this problem can be further comp uh, compounded because people often turn a blind eye to it. Whereas we ask all residents in the community to join us in raising the visibility of this crime, whose victims are all too often invisible, together we can become more informed about the pressing issue uh, and work to combat the injustices. So therefore, Paul Finley, Mayor of the City of Madison, do hereby proclaim the month of January 2024 as Human Trafficking Awareness Month in the City of Madison. And I want to give you this. Thank you for what you're doing. And then if you want to take a couple words, we welcome you to do that. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have too much to say. Just thank you on behalf of the Junior League of Huntsville for um, joining us and recognizing this important issue this month. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. 
Next, we have public comments. Public comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Uh, please come forward and state your name and district where you reside. And we did not have any comment cards turned in, so is there anyone from the floor who would like to address the council? Please come forward. I'm sorry, I'm a little scattered. I had an emergency with the ice. But um, first I want to talk about, and this all comes from the Mayor Council Handbook. Okay, um, the city clerk is the only person who determines whether to release a public record. Uh, that's reading directly. So if, the, if something goes before the council, it is public record, period. So it cannot be refused, nor does a department head have the right to refuse me public records, which has been going on since Mr. Killjoy took over. Um, the other thing is about, and this is right out of your handbook, Mayor Council Handbook, that um, when you do immediate consideration, you have to have two votes, not one vote. And I will hand this, this uh, information to Lisa. It's on page 53 out of your handbook. The other one's on 56 with the uh, Freedom of Information. So you have to take two separate votes, one to consider it and then one to pass it. That has not been happening here. Then I'm going to speak on resolution 027, Tyler Technology, $69,000 for software that six states are currently suing them because it, it uh, messed with their court systems. But it's my understanding when, when researching the software, uh, they may have a new version out which has has absolutely no reviews. Uh, most of this, this software is for a population of a quarter million or better. So I imagine we must be going to do mass layoffs since it does all the payroll and everything and it gives you all the reports. You will not need the staff that you need if you have this uh, software. Plus, um, I just. I don't understand why a city of 57,000 needs software for a city of a quarter million. Uh, some of the uh, places that have it are Orlando, Florida, Charlottesville, uh, Virginia, Lubbock, Texas. Those are just a few, but they're all over a quarter million people. So I don't understand why Madison City even needs that. Then resolution 2024-028. We're doing an emergency field fence at Palmer Park with no bids at $300,000. And this fence has been a disaster for a decade. It's not like this has to go on an emergency. You know what could have gone on an emergency? Three days before the storm, ordering salt and having it delivered before the storm came. That would have been a good thing for an emergency, but a $300,000 fence is a ridiculous thing since it's been over a decade. And, you know, you're going to push it through tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Daly. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will close public comments and move to the Consent Agenda and Finance Committee report. Yes. Um, the Finance Committee has reviewed the regular and periodic bills, and we also have several things on the um, Consent Agenda. And I was just looking at the, um, the insurance claims that are here listed for the um, the damage to the police cars and wanted to make sure that we have exactly what we're supposed to have written here. We've got um, on the first one, when I look at the, um, the package behind the agenda, it states that it is 55, 86, 67 minus $500. And then, but then on the next one, it doesn't state it that way. It says it in a different way. And each one of them has a minus $500. Do they all need to be in the same format? Or are these all okay the way they are? They're okay the way they are, but usually they are all in the same format. 
we have a $500 deductible, mm -hmm. which uh, we usually try to show that and then conclude in that final paragraph actually what we're going to receive that go into the general account. Okay. So even though, I mean, because I've, I've looked at each one of them and the total amount is correct for these other ones, but, you know, it just kind of threw me when the first one was listed with the the gross amount mm -hmm. and then minus $500 mm -hmm. and the others were the net amount. Net amount. So um, does anybody else have any more questions about that? I see it. Okay. Um, so that was a major thing that we had on the um, consent agenda this time. We've got another draw on the Madison Branch Boulevard um, roundabout and we've got some professional services for the County Line Road Royal, Royal Drive extension. So, um, and with that, I would move to approve. Okay, motion and second, any questions? Ready for a vote. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford. Aye. Motion passed. Presentation and reports. Starting all, with Mayor Finney. All right, and I'll start with the first slide if I could, Chris. A um, little bit of another update on our Civic Awareness Academy. Um, so as we talked about at the last council meeting, uh, starting next Monday, uh, applications will go live on the city website, and, and uh, we will get this out uh, in a press release so everyone in the city knows about this. We're excited about it. Um, the website is madisonal.gov backslash Civic Awareness Academy. Um, and then to give you an idea, um, it, the acceptance emails will be out on the 4th, so we'll have a couple of, uh, a month and a half or so to go through this. Uh, orientation on the 18th and then the six different classes, uh, an off week on the 6th, and then a graduation at the council meeting. Uh, we're excited about this. Again, um, uh, as many folks as we can get to this academy to learn as much as we can about how the city works, to meet council, our department heads, and the people that are managing the city. Um, so excited about that, and we'll continue to push that out and get as much information out as we can which leads me to the second one. You probably had this covered, Renee, but um, Wednesday night, 5.30 is a work session, and we do have it set up where on all of our larger projects from the Fund 38, we're gonna have updates on those, both financially and then a time frame on kind of how we're doing things. Uh, Gerald and his team have worked hard to get some schematics of what uh, the, the public um, safety annex is gonna look like and, and, and then and get ready to move that forward and some other things there. So really excited about that this coming Wednesday, 5.30 right here in, in this uh, area. And then lastly, the ICE event. And I think that's the way to say it. It's an ICE event, which um, started, uh, basically we knew that about a week beforehand that it was gonna be a snow event. And we continued to work on that. Um, we had public works prepared. Our entire team was prepared for what happened um, Sunday. If it were three to five inches of snow, like we were told, it wasn't. It ended up being an inch and a half of ice, which completely changed everything. I'll say from that point forward, and I'm glad Jeff's here, EMA immediately started calls on Monday, on Martin Luther King Day, where we as a collective body of this entire North Alabama area, everybody from um, Mayor Battle, Chairman McCutcheon, Hemsey, the hospitals, as we had done through COVID, all got together, share anything we possibly could that would help us continue to manage this. But again, you can't, it's, it's difficult in North Alabama, it doesn't matter what you have to manage an inch and a half of ice. So I just wanna say thank you to all the people who were prepared and then the things that went really well. You know, Public Works had 30 people there on site throughout the course of the week and they did everything they can everywhere they could. An example would be, we literally had someone go through the intersection of Hughes Road and Madison Boulevard and took out the traffic box about noon on, I think it was Wednesday. Four hours later, those guys had it back up and going. You know, those are the kind of things I can tell you. Our police department was constantly out there pushing cars out of ditches, up hills. Um, our communications team did a phenomenal job of trying to get information out. I think one of the things we wish we would have done earlier, but I'm very glad we did it when we did, is explain exactly why we were in the situation we were when it came from, you know, snow to ice. Could you scrape it? 
if you, if you did, you were going to get glass. Um, and, you know, we had plenty. We learned from 2009 when we had nine inches of snow, and all we had in the city was one road grader to get stuff off. We have vehicles that have plows on them. Chairman, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, County Commissioner Haraway had those same things, but you can't do it with ice. Um, please, I really appreciate uh, fire. I know you guys a lot of calls throughout the course of the entire um, event, and then especially when it started to thaw out, several calls on flooding with people that had burst pipes, which then leads me to the last thing is thank you to our facility and grounds team. You guys funded that this year. Knock on wood and as much as we can. Um, we haven't had any burst pipes because we went to all of our facilities prepared inside and out for that. So, again, do we, as, as a community, we'll bring all these folks back together. One of the things Jeff and his team do is lessons learned. What can we do? Um, how could we be prepared for ice versus snow? Um, we want to continue to get better. But I'm really proud of our team, especially our public works team, uh, who was at their facility for five straight nights, ready when the time came. Um, and with that said, that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. District 1. Um, I was just going to ask, would you be able to share that slide with us of the dates just so that we could also? Sure. That's great. Thank yes, you. I um, appreciate that. Um, I just also want to echo um, Mayor's thoughts and also add my thanks to our community, those that stayed home, those that heeded the great communication from MD MPD that said, do not get out on the road unless it's an emergency. Um, I know uh, we just all went through COVID and we were at home for a while and so we got a little bit stir crazy, but I think we had far less accidents because people did heed those warnings. Um, unfortunately, there were two terrible accidents, uh, one in Harvest, one off on Chester Road, where men lost their lives because they did not heed those warnings and um, the cause was speed and ice conditions. So I'm just very grateful for our community, for MPD um, sharing that information. Um, and then I also wanted to put out a pitch for the Madison Arts Alliance. They are looking for volunteers for their board. You do not have to be artsy. You can, you know, uh, they let me on there and I'm terrible at Pictionary and things like that, but I do have a love for music and art and culture and, and bringing communities together. So if you feel that alignment, you feel like you might have something to offer, even though, you, do, like I said, you don't have to draw a straight line, uh, we would love to have some support for some volunteer opportunities that we'll be having coming up this year, like the concerts and the park and things like that. And it's just a great way to get involved with the community. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Yes, I would also like to thank our first responders, Madison Police Department, Madison Fire and Rescue, Public Works, um, Facilities and Grounds, Madison Utilities, and all of the Madison City family. Um, and like Brian was answering questions on social media. Somebody was asking about a court date. So everybody played their part, and I want to thank everybody that, you know, put in effort to keep us all safe. Um, today, I went to Madison Hospital, and we celebrated Apple's, birth Apple's third birthday. As those of y'all who remember Apple, Apple is the, the little black um, dog who is um, a – support dog from Madison Hospital. And they brought in all of the support dogs from all of the Huntsville Hospital um, family and took pictures of them having cupcakes. So that was fun. And um, week before last, I attended board training with Madison Chamber. They said that it's been a long time since they had training and decided to do that. You've already covered the work session. Um, also, I wanted to mention we've got some board appointments tonight, and uh, Mara mentioned the Arts Alliance, but it would be really great if we could have more different kinds of people who would apply to be on boards and committees for our city. Younger people. We have a lot of men, and women would be nice. But people with different perspectives build a better city, build a better community. And the more perspectives that we can include in our boards and committees, the stronger we're going to be. So if you know somebody who would be a great fit or you want to encourage somebody who is, is maybe younger and thinks that they're too young to do something, no, we've got 
I would put up our high school and middle school students against several adults. <laughs> but I just want to encourage that. But um, that's all I have. Thank you. District 3? No new business. District 4? No new business. 6? Well, I'll just add to everybody else. I really appreciated all that the city employees did for the people and taking care of them. But I also want to thank the residents who looked after each other, who looked after their neighbors, who were able to get out and either get food for people or pick up prescriptions for people or just do the neighborly things. And again, I say this every time, but Madison is family, and this was really a, a test for all of us. And like Mara said, people listened, stayed home, and people also worked together to keep everybody safe. And I just want to congratulate everyone for that, and that's all I have. Thank you. District 7? Um, since everybody's thanked everybody, I'm going to not miss somebody. I'm not going to do that. I just want to call out specifically uh, an example of what you had over the weekend of just how everybody worked together. Um, I got a message, I think, from some folks up on Rainbow Mountain. I think, Paul, I called you. It was, at some point, I lost track of what day it was. Friday. But was it Friday? Uh, Friday. And, you know, asking the mayor, hey, is there something we can do? I didn't realize, like, folks on Rainbow Mountain, like, literally couldn't even get down the mountain. Um, and at that point, explained to me that earlier in the week we had an issue where we used quite a bit of our um, DI sewer salt, whatever the, the right uh, uh, thing was, that we didn't really have any more to get to, to, to do that, but that the team was resting, which they needed to be, but that either, I think it was on Sunday, they were going to reassess, figure out what they could do. They came back Sunday, reassessed, had a, a report from Kent via email that was, hey, we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to go out, we're going to work this, we've got some sand, gravel, and then report back that they've been able to clear the path on Sunday. Now, this was after they had been out, right, Monday through Friday working extreme hours and working to get that cleared. And I was able to communicate with that homeowner, hey, this is what's going on. And I, that, to me, is just a testament of the folks putting other people before themselves to go do that. And I appreciate this entire team for working through that. Um, at the same time, I also want to say, I mean, I appreciate the grocery stores, the drivers, the folks that even if you couldn't get on the roads, you could walk to the grocery store, you could do whatever you need, you know, how to get there, but they still had groceries, you know. At some point, you realize when you get done, you're like, uh, my refrigerator's empty. Um, and so the whole community just partnering together to figure out how do we work through this and get through it. Um, that was that was nice to see. So, and I just add, you know, the one thing on that story is they had used most of what they had, but they recognized we're not going to make the difference we need to. We need to save what we have, yeah. and we can make the difference. And uh, work side by side with uh, Commissioner Haraway, you know, and when we actually could make a difference on Thursday, he started on slaughter. We started on uh, county line, and we kept working towards the middle. And then they were going all the way through midnight and 1 o'clock on Thursday night when we knew we finally could make a difference. By Friday, those roads where well, they weren't perfect were absolutely what we would have expected had it just been snow on Sunday. So, yeah. again, that partnership even goes, especially to folks like Steve Haraway. Yeah, no, certainly. That's it. Okay, and I'm glad you mentioned that because District 5 also had some roads that were attended to on Sunday and yeah. can't um, really stepped up uh, to help. Um, I just have one um, quick, quick addition on the work session on Wednesday. We found out that AECOM is going to be able to give us an update also on the interchange, and they've asked to come first mm -hmm. because he has, Eddie has to get back on the road. So we're going to get to add that. Um, and then I wanted to thank Connie for taking on the liaison position with the Madison Chamber that has been a recent uh, update, and I appreciate you so much for doing that. And I think Karen was gone when she had agreed to be the liaison uh, for MVP, and so we've had some new uh, assignments recently, and so I want to thank you both for taking those on. Okay, next we're going to go to board committee and appointments, and I think, are all these yours, Teddy? They're all mine. Okay. Um. 
Okay. Mr. Dunning, do them one at a time. Um, yeah. Uh, Amy Bianca at um, place three. Any other nominations for place three? Seeing none, Damien Bianca is appointed by acclamation. No, I will not be able to say this word. But, um, David, <laughs> for super new Mary. Mary? Only if you can say it. Numerary. Super numerary. You. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Six years later. <laughs> Any other nominations for super numerary one? Seeing none, David Kessler is appointed by acclamation. And Michael Harbour plays it. Any other nominations? Seeing none, Michael Harbour is appointed by acclamation. Place two. Uh, we do not have any public hearings for this evening, so we'll begin with the department reports and courts. Good evening. Court had asked me to uh, prepare resolution number 2024-034-R. This is authorizing the disposal of certain municipal court department records in accordance with the Alabama Unified Judicial Records Retention Schedule. Mr. Proof. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions? Seeing none, we're ready for a vote. Council Member Shaw. Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. And motion passes. Thank you, Brian. Engineering. Okay, first I have resolution number 2024-021-R, authorizing a public professional services agreement with J.W. Kennedy and Associates uh, in an amount not to exceed $2,400 for two deeds and legal descriptions on project number 22035, Highland Ditch Rehab, to be funded from the engineering department budget. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions? Ready for a vote. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Motion passes. Next. Okay, next, I have resolution number 2024-022-R, approving a memorandum of agreement with Madison County for roadway striping. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any questions? Ready for a vote. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Motion passes. Next. Okay. Uh, resolution number 2024-025-R, authorizing a professional services agreement with Halliburton Survey and Mapping in an amount not to exceed $1,800 for a right-of-way survey along Hughes Road at the Villas at Madison Condominium. On project number 24010. Mr. Proof. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions? Ready for a vote? Motion second. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? And the motion passes. Okay. And finally, I have resolution number 2024-026-R, authorizing an agreement with OMI Incorporated to in obtain inclinometer readings for the Hughes Road Railroad overpass in the amount of $2,983. Move to approve. Second. Motion second. Any questions? Ready for a vote. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Michael. Right, thank you. Still decent ground. Facilities has one item for consideration that resolution 2024029R authorizing a 12 month lease for the dwelling located at 28720 Brown Ferry Road. Thank you, Frank. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions? Can you explain that just a little bit for what that is, please? So this is the home that's located on the property that 
was donated to the city in December, we had signed a one-month lease, which covered January. Currently, the city doesn't have any plans for the house, and we believe it's better to keep someone in the house than just leave it vacant until we come up with a plan to move forward. We've also done two things. One, the entire team went over, um, investigated the house. It's in good shape. Um, the renters who are there seem like they're really good renters. And again, part of what, as, as Gerald said, that they wanted to get that donation in by the end of the year. We have several projects going on right now, so we don't see anything happening. And so to get rent for that facility for a year, um, to keep somebody in it to keep the upkeep is, is so much better than not having it that way. So get a little money, keep it in, in place, and we'll eventually figure out what to do with that land. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for a vote. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Fire. Asking for your consideration for resolution number 2024-029-R, authorizing a 12-month lease. My oh, bad. I went down up one. <laughs> yeah. Let's try 24-024-R, authorizing professional services agreement with Vickers Consulting Services for grant writing services in the amount of $1,200 uh, to be paid out of our budget. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Motion by Robleski, second by Denzing. Any questions? Chief, what's been your success on that in the past? This past year, they helped us get that SCBA grant for $494,000. So we're replacing all of our SCBA. In fact, it's all in now. The new uh, the new air packs are in now, being ready. So they were very successful last year. Uh, pretty good return on that investment. Yes, sir. <laughs> you gave them $2,400. Do you think they could get us a million? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> grant writers are golden. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ready for a vote. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Here's one we don't see often. Yes. <laughs> Uh, IT just has one resolution for tonight. Uh, resolution number 2024-027 R. It's authorizing the mayor to accept a quote from Tyler Technologies for New World Systems Software and Maintenance Support Services in the amount of $69,859.03. And this is to be paid from the IT budget. Move to approve. Thank you. Motion by Powell, Sigma Shaw. Any questions? I do. Okay. Why was this firm selected? Why were why did you feel they were best out of everyone? This was selected about 13 years ago, so it's been in place for approximately 13 years. And we went through a lot, a lot of, you know, demos with several other companies. And we let the users actually choose this one, and everyone felt this was the best that would best fit the city's needs for what we needed. So this is the core of our city's system. Uh, one of the things you guys did approve also is Chris now has someone who can take this and customize it. A lot of what we were doing in many instances was either done by, you know, we'd have to take what was there and then do it by hand or one at a time or contract it out to somebody. And there's several issues that have been taken care of immediately by someone who now in-house knows how to use this even more efficiently. Yes. This is the core of what the city uses for all of its accounting. Yeah, payroll, HR, um, building, a lot of departments use this software. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, ready for a vote. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Planning. <clears throat> Uh, 
we have proposed ordinance number 2024-11, and this is a vacation of an easement. Uh, you can see that uh, grade in line that parallels Outfield Drive. This is in town Madison. Um, all of the utilities have signed off. We're preserving um, a small area for Huntsville Utilities, um, which does have facilities there, but Madison Utilities um, and the city don't have any interest in the rest of that area. Um, and happy to answer any questions if you should have them. Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions for Mayor Beth? In for a vote. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works? All right, I'm gonna take, uh, we, we gave Kent the night off since we had only this and, and uh, yeah, we thought so too. Um, but we'll ask for council approval on resolution number 2024-030-R, authorizing a renewal of a third party billing agreement with Huntsville Utilities. Move to approve. Second. Robleski, second by Shaw. Any questions? Ready for vote. Council member Robleski? Aye. Council member Shaw? Aye. Council president Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Spears? Aye. Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seaford? Aye. And the motion passes. And recreation. Your favorite person. My favorite person. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get a big hit. Tonight. Good evening. I have resolution 2024-28-R, declaring an emergency need for repairs to the West Coast. It's a backstop fence and authorizing a contract without a bid for such repairs. Um, around December 9th, we had a storm that came through, um, came in the next morning and found the fences damaged from the concrete bases all the way up to the poles. Um, had two different companies come out, fencing companies and construction companies, and both deemed it unsafe for us to play ball there. Um, the reason for the emergency is our softball season starts February 24th, and actually we've got two uh, school tournaments, the 16th and 29th. Um, so we, to get that work done um, in time for, for to play, um, we can't go through a bid process and another council meeting to award it and get that work completed on time. Um, we've got two options. We've got uh, a Band-Aid option that would basically repair the fence as is, and then there's a long-term option that's, that's a little more expensive. Um, we're waiting on the insurance company to come in and, and have an adjuster look at the damage and, and let us know. I think that will drive the decision of which way we decide to go based on budget. But uh, we're asking for uh, not to exceed $300,000. Um, we're still waiting on one of the other uh, construction companies to come out and give us a quote. So it may be less than that. It may be right at the 300000 figure. I can't tell you right now. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Okay, motion second. Any questions? When it, when it comes to revenue, are the Wesco Fields a revenue generator for the city? Yeah, we, we uh, pretty much have a tournament from February all the way up past Thanksgiving sometimes. Mm -hmm. We charge for those fields. Yeah, those, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and some of those tournaments have 60 teams. Yeah, we have a Bob Jones tournament traditionally around uh, Easter time, and mm -hmm. they have 60 teams, and that park is crazy with people. and. And by far, that is our most used facility out in, in Palmer Park. Mm -hmm. Just know if they call and ask you to throw out a first pitch, you have to throw it this way versus <laughs> this way, which is really hard. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, are we ready for a vote? I did a couple of questions. Okay. Um, the discrepancy is huge between the two, the 215 mm -hmm. and the 300,000. It's just the work that's being done, which you'll decide later, or? Yeah, um, like I said, it'll depend on what the adjuster gives us. The, the 300,000 is giving us, is it 10-inch poles, Randy? Where we have three-inch poles right now, that'd be replacing all of that. Um, basically, when we talked to the, the construction company, he said, unless you put, if you put the three-inch poles back, you're looking at another incident happening. They were constructed wrong which is hard to believe since they were constructed 40 years ago and made it this far. So um, we were just getting our options in place of, of what we can do and what the insurance company will pay us for. Okay. Um, 
I understand that there's a need to work fast, but it seems like this just came out of nowhere. Where is the $300,000 coming out of your budget? I guess I'm going to have to find it. Um, like I said, we're waiting on insurance funds. We haven't met with an adjuster yet, so we don't know what we're, get, what we're getting from our insurance company, and that'll help drive the decision. Yeah, I'll probably have to put some in the mid-year budget if we don't have enough to cover. In my budget, I have some a little, a little bit of extra money. In my budget, I'll have to look at that at the time. But like I said, I got to know what the insurance is going to pay first. So you're asking us to fund something. It just seems like there's a whole lot of discrepancies in all these numbers. Not really. Uh, so kind of like 215 is a low bid if you go back with what you had. Yep. 300 is what? 215 is the patches. 300 is to do it right. And then there could be a decrement based on what insurance comes back with from that. Correct. It seems like we've also added a lot of money into your budget or put in, put money that the last time we added several hundred thousand dollars to. Where is all this coming from? What what What's not going to happen because we're doing this is my question. I don't believe anything. So if it was a police car that got hit and, you know, they don't know the price of the car, but they've got to buy one immediately to have another car, and you're waiting on the insurance. This is the same same situation. Well, we're talking about a lot of money here. This is a, I mean, okay, a car. Okay, it's a fire truck then. Well, it, it, it's a great question, and I think, you know, let's give an example. Right now, how much is in the budget for Field 7 and 8? Um, we've got 800,000? Yeah, 700,000. So right now that we were looking to take Field 7 and 8 and expand those fields, um, to have more ability to use that as a kid's field because we have more need. As COVID's come out, we got a lot of kids coming back. We probably can get by with a different design if we need to on something that is a want versus this is absolutely a need. Right. And so that's how we manage each one of these. It's a great question. But we also have to get things moving now and even get to the point where we know what the actual number is. So that's what we'll do is we'll balance taking care of this, which is probably one of the biggest recreational money makers that we have, mm -hmm. and the only facility that's there specifically for female mm -hmm. um, sports versus taking what we have in the budget to improve uh, Palmer Park and maintain versus change. That's a great question. Well, I mean, Palmer Park, years ago, we put a lot of money into design, and then is this – part of that same design by improving these four fields. Is that just improving what you had decided? No. Um, our design had these four fields already included, so they're already built. The design included new roads and additional other complexes that, that were needed, some additional soccer fields, some sand volleyball courts, um, a maintenance building that we, we don't have. Um, this this was included in that master plan as is. So it is an as is. I yeah. think that was my question. Is yeah. it added mm -hmm. or no? It's it's not. It's nothing's it. new. Um, I will tell you that we've done several repairs to that fence over the years. Just not this. The netting on it is always needing to be replaced. Um, it, it just wasn't built right in the first place, but it lasted 40 years. So I don't know if that statement's completely true or not. Um, but, yeah, but we also, I don't know if Rod's Rod is not here, but I, I think we have an account for insurance um, mm -hmm. when we have an incident like this that we pull money from. So that may be a source of funding as well. But I'm, I'm hoping that the insurance comes back and says, okay, you know, your, your quotes are correct, and we'll fund whatever minus our deductible and what we have to pay out of pocket is what the grand plan is now. Will that happen? I don't know. But we'll, we'll have to take those one step at a time. Okay, just while I have you, these two add-ons, what are the scheduled yeah. alternatives? Yeah, these that, like in the future? What that, are yeah, the, when we had them quote that, items? Um, we had them quote, we, we recently did the, the cricket pitch and those gentlemen were interested in putting up a net in behind their, their cricket, and they wanted us to get a cost. That's what that is. That has nothing to do with this project. Okay, but it's still in here for me. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you for your time. Okay, ready for a vote? Council Member Powell? Aye. Council Member Speakers? Aye. Council President Bartlett? Aye. Council Member Robleski? Aye. Council Member Shaw? Aye. Council Member Denzine? Aye. Council Member Seifert? Aye. The motion passes, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other miscellaneous announcements? Thank you. And entertaining motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.